It's 21 days until the presidential election. Both candidates now focusing on key battleground states. That certainly includes Florida. President Trump in Sanford yesterday. Joe Biden will be in South Florida in Miami today. And joining us now to talk more about the political, uh, the race is political science lecturer at UCF, John Hanley. John, good morning. Good to see you this morning. Good morning, Ryan. So here we are just weeks away. This is kind of the final push. Now, what are your thoughts right now on the state of this race? Well, I think, you know, the race has been stable for a long time. Um, the polls are showing Biden up by about 10, which is about three points more than Hillary Clinton was up uh, at the stage. Um, that might close a little bit as Trump comes back to the uh, campaign trail. There's a phenomenon out there where people are less likely to uh, respond to public opinion polls if they envision that their candidate is down. So now that he's back out there, that might, you know, see a little bit of a pop in his polls. John, let's talk about this. There's a New York Times poll, Siena College poll, that shows President Trump trailing Joe Biden in two key states, Wisconsin and Michigan. But at the same time, large crowds are showing up, just like we saw in 2016. So how do we square the difference in the polls and maybe what we're seeing out there on the streets? Well, I think what you see out there in the streets is a lot of people who are already engaged by uh, the campaign. Uh, we don't know how many other events that they're going to. Uh, you know, there's a possible, you know, issue with the polls in that we don't know how likely someone is to turn out to vote. They'll, a lot of people will say, oh, I'm definitely going to vote, and they don't make it. So, uh, so you have to look a little bit at both. Um, you know, for the president, that was obviously a, an optimistic sign. Um, but, you know, as more polls come in, I think that the, the situation will clarify a little bit. John, and usually we'd be talking about, all right, there's a big debate coming up. We don't know if we'll see that final debate or not. So the candidates may not get that final push. So what does each candidate need to do here in these final weeks? Well, I think, you know, Trump with the rally last night and some of the messaging coming out of it, like, I feel so powerful, um, that's going to hit awkwardly with a lot of the voters out there. So I think, you know, he could uh, change up with some interviews, talking more about his experiences with COVID, uh, you know, to, to news outlets and would get him out to a wider uh, spectrum of the population. Um, for Biden, try to match some of uh, Trump's activity uh, and show de determination. In 2016, we saw these uh, events with Beyonce and Bruce Springsteen around the Hillary Clinton campaign. You might not be able to do something like that this year, but there's, you know, there has to be some other ways that they're talking about to try to get people and get Joe Biden in front of people's eyes. John, I want to finish with this. We knew there'd be a, a big demand for early voting. Scenes in Georgia say people lining up for five hours to vote. I mean, does that kind of put in perspective uh, the way people want to get out there and have their voice heard this year? Well, I think that there's, it shows that there's a tremendous enthusiasm about this race. A lot of it is from the people who are very eager, the most eager to go out and, and, and vote. They would probably be able to get out and, and stand in a, a shorter line today or on Thursday. Um, so uh, it's something to be monitored, just as you know the, the Trump rallies are and, and their attendance. I'm always an election day voter. I get the sense I might be there by myself as everyone votes early, but I'm going to wait until election day like some people. John, always appreciate the insight. Thanks for joining us. All right. Thank you, Ryan. All right, Danielle. Ryan.